In this video here, um, what I want to do is just focus on the regression model. I'm going to leave for when you write your report how you're going to interpret the graphs and statistics, uh, mostly because everybody's graphs are going to be different based on your random sample. So my analysis of mine is not going to match exactly yours. Um, you can see my analysis when you read my, um, read my sample project, just so you can see the type of analysis you're looking at. What I want to talk about is the regression model r and r squared at least how you find them okay so the first one says provide a graph of your scatter plot we did that with uh, a line of best fit so if you look here what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click on the data and i'm going to click add trend line okay and you see it says linear it puts it right in there and i'm going to click display equation on graph and r squared on there and you can see i can drag this up here um, you can see that those are my values here and it looks like the slope is negative, which is not what we would expect, right? Because a negative slope here implies that as you increase the square footage of a house, its selling price goes down, which is not really realistic. Um, and then the R squared value here is incredibly low. Um, I also wanna show you next how you find the correlation coefficient on here. Um, it says, fine, the, we got the scatter plot. I'll talk about in my case, if, if regression model is appropriate. Um, I'm going to come back to this, but let's find R, the value of the correlation coefficient. So I'm going to put this here. So what you do is you're going to go equals C-O-R-R-E-L. And then you're going to select, um, it doesn't matter if you select the X or Y's first here, but I'm going to select the X's first. And I'm going to go comma, and then I'm going to select my Y's. And you can see here that the linear correlation coefficient is uh, negative, and it's actually pretty low. It's, um, it's between um, zero, the absolute value is between zero and four. So if you look in your textbook, right, it, it implies that there's a weak correlation here. Um, okay, so the next part it says, um, so we've got R, we have R squared, that's just right there. Uh, the next part says, uh, identify any possible outliers or influential points and discuss their effect on the correlation. So if you look at my graph, and th again, this is not going to be exactly how it's going to look on yours. Um, you can see that this outlier is incredibly impacting our analysis. All right. It's just so far away from the other ones like real estate. My, uh, in my sample here, this outlier is New York City, right? So, um, you know, New York City real estate, you know, I live in the Northeast, so... Um, I can tell you New York State uh, real estate is unlike any other region in the country, right? It's, it's, the, it's the mega city of the United States, it's a very desirable location. Um, so discuss keeping or removing outliers from your data set. In my case, I'm actually thinking it, it needs to be removed. And, and watch what happens when I remove this, this, these values. Um, my, my graph will automatically update and so won't all my values. So watch, I'm gonna remove these values here. And you see my graph automatically gets updated and so does not my correlation coefficient. And so does not my R squared. So what you're seeing here is um, that we're getting a positive slope. So this is exactly what we're expecting, right? As you increase square footage, um, uh, the, the median listing price is going up. However, for my data set, and again, might not be, be yours, um, uh, we're still seeing a weak uh, relationship. So it still looks like it's heavily influenced by a few other data points uh, that I randomly selected. So you can go in and talk about this in your own data set if you should remove it or not remove it. Um, but for this part here, this, this is exactly how you find the best fit line, R and R squared. So I won't have any follow videos up uh, after this on how you interpret all this result. So I encourage you when you see my sample report with my data to, to model your analysis roughly the same. Okay, again, your data set's gonna be different. Okay, so your analysis is going to be different. Um, but at least this these video series here, this three part video series here shows you how to do the Excel work. And the analysis now is up to you. And as always, I will be um, uh, be available in class, you know, for questions, anything like that.